What's up, everybody? This is Gray here on the Sunday Shift Report. Hope everybody out there is doing well. Well, uh, so I'm running extremely behind. Uh, spent a little bit more time at the flea market this morning than I should have uh, with the family, but, you know, that's how things roll. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, this is not probably going to be very long, I hope, maybe 30 minutes. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. I, I got the articles that I want to go over with you. Luckily, I've been doing research all week, so I have some things uh, to touch on. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, plus I was plagued with some technical issues a little while ago. Uh, go figure, right? Anything to try to get this thing out on time at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that being said, let me say a couple things before we get into the Sunday shift report. Is one, I want to send prayers out to Tim, the prepping preacher. Uh, folks, he's in the hospital. He's been going through some things. Uh, last time I checked which was uh, yesterday afternoon sometime. Uh, he was still there. Um, I did uh, reach out to him. Hopefully he'll respond back to me when he is capable to do so. Uh, so please send uh, prayers to Tim the Prepping Preacher, Tim the Prepping Preacher, uh, to him, his family, and everyone associated with uh, his community. Uh, we're really hoping that uh, everything goes well and he's feeling better and recovers quickly. Uh, so... Prayers out to you, Tim. Uh, you're an awesome person, and I hope you get better soon. Uh, what else do we got on the agenda Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Uh, the live, Dr. Arthur T. Bradley, NASA scientist, EMP, coronal mass ejection expert. Like I said, again, he works for NASA. Uh, he's out there in Langley. Uh, he's on the New York's bestseller list. He has a disaster preparedness book. He uh, also has a, a fiction book uh, called The uh, Survivalist Series. Phenomenal series. Loved it. Um, we're going to have a great time Tuesday night, man. Uh, I don't know if you watched. Uh, it's about seven or eight months ago when I interviewed him. Uh, very informative uh, guest to have. Uh, very Lots of credentials and whatnot. You can look him up, Dr. Arthur Bradley. He has a channel here on YouTube as well. I think he's under the EMP doctor. Uh so, and we're going to touch on a lot of different subjects, so if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, we'll be live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Tuesday. I asked some of you folks to send me questions uh, that you want me to ask a doctor to kind of speed things along. I got two people who emailed me, so, so far that's the only questions I have, and that of my own. Just wanted to put that out there. And also, uh, if you're watching this, go ahead and please hit that thumbs up button. It's always truly appreciated. It does help uh, with, uh, you know, the push. Uh, without you, the viewers, and without the thumbs up and all the comments and stuff like that, uh, we wouldn't have a channel today. YouTube would bury us even deeper than we've already been buried. <laughs> Anyways, on to the shift report, right? Gray, let's get going. So, a lot of people have been discussing this whole fertilizer thing, and so I wanted to do some research and dig into it a bit more. And some of the things that I found with the whole fertilizer shortage is quite troubling. Uh, almost to the point, uh, some of the things that you see, um, and I guess I should be wearing a tinfoil hat when I say this, is that it's almost like some of it was planned in the aspect of uh, sanctions that our government has put on certain countries in regards to fertilizer. Uh, also, uh, you know, this is the whole supply and demand thing, uh, but it's not looking good folks. And, and there's a reason why I want to touch on the whole fertilizer thing. Uh, and other things that exacerbated this whole situation was the Texas freeze or some people call it the Arctic blast. Um, I think it was hurricane Ida that hit down in Louisiana. There's a lot of things, uh, that made this a lot, uh, worse, uh, than it currently is or, or m moving forward and whatnot in 2022. And it's like, <laughs> 2022 just keeps on getting better and better, right, folks? Anyways, um, one of the plants that we grow here in the U.S. And, and, and abroad is corn. And the reason I'm focusing on corn is because some people underestimate corn. When they hear corn, they think either for consumption or human consumption or to feed animals. Now, don't get me wrong. That's very important as well. But the, fertil the whole fertilizer thing is going to affect corn specifically heavily. Uh, I've watched some content on this. I've watched, I re read some research articles on this. And speaking of that, I want to apologize. I will not have links to all the, uh, the articles that I'm going over today. I do apologize for that. I'm just running extremely behind. Uh, literally it's like four o'clock in the afternoon when I'm trying to put this together, produce it, edit it, and then get it uploaded to YouTube and get it all running. My apologies. 
But to stay on track with things, I have, a, like I said, let me bring up the article so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And I want to show you some, some some key things because I've been watching, I know it's weird when you watch, uh, what do they call it? Corn, I don't know if it's say corn stocks, but the investment market and things like that and trying to understand the whole corn process from, you know, from farm to growing to the commodity and everything else associated with it. But let's, let's bring this up first real quick uh, and discuss it. Uh, if you can see here on the screen, it says too many uh, to count. Uh, factors driving fertilizer prices higher and higher. Anyways, it says among farmers and ranchers, very few topics are being discussed as much as the skyrocketing cost of fertilizer, increasing concerns regarding availability. Uh, given that fertilizer costs account for approximately 15% of total cash cost in the U.S., Fertilizer prices are the number one issue on farmers' minds as they begin to set up purchases for the 2022 growing season. Uh, and if you think about this, the last couple seasons, we've been hit with a lot of different things out west with the droughts. Uh, and there's a lot of things affecting our farmers. Uh, and I can go deep into that whole uh, thing, and we can always talk about that on, let's say, Thursday night if we want to talk about that. Uh, how certain farmers are being bought out and, and the weather patterns and everything associated with, with, our, with our, our crops here in the U.S., as well as other countries buying them out uh, from underneath this uh, and our country or our government letting them do so. Anyways, stay on task, Ray. It says, unfortunately, the fertilizer sticker price farmers in some areas are reporting is up to 300% and delivery times are anyone's best guess. So not only the cost has jumped over 300% in certain areas, but getting it delivered to the farms where they need it to use to grow crops um, is anyone's best guess per this article. Now, it says increased global, increased global fertilizer demand. I said two-thirds of global fertilizer demand is driven primarily by these six crops. And I underlined the first one. Globally, corn represents about 16%. 16% corn is a is one of those crops that need a specific type of fertilizer and that's what we're seeing these issues uh, arise with the whole corn situation and it's just something I want you guys to pay a little attention to in regards because like I said and I'm going to go over some things that you would not probably some people may not know that corn is used for outside of human consumption and feed for their cattle uh, and other farm animals anyways uh, of the farm use fertilizer demand uh, so corn represents about 16% of the farm use uh, fertilizer demand, uh, with uh, wheat a close second representing about 15% of global farm use fertilizer demand. Rice represents about 14%, uh, and then you got vegetables at 9%, fruits at 7%, and soybeans at 5%. Some farmers are even talking about not growing corn this year uh, and growing soybeans. Now, some farmers, they do they kind of flip it flip-flop between soybeans and uh, corn every other year, uh, in a normal growing cycle and how they do their things uh, where these farms grow uh, this type of material, right? My main concern is corn. Uh, and there's some some really good content out there. The people who have touched on this and dive deeper than I'm diving into it right now. But let's kind of dive into <laughs> corn, right? People are probably thinking to me I'm crazy that I'm focusing on corn, but corn is a staple. Uh, maize and, and, and the list goes on, folks. But there's a couple things I want to show you. First, I want to show you uh, how, you know, we always talk about, like, why do we talk about Russia? Why do we talk about China? Why do we talk about all these different places? And how I say we we need to focus on what's around us and what we can control in our own lives. But we always need to be informed and educated on what's going on abroad. And I want to bring this little quick thing before I go into the uses for corn real quick. Let me throw this article up real quick. And you see what I have highlighted here, Okay. And, and this is where I want you to focus on. Uh, this is like uh, corn trading and stuff like that. This is on one of those websites where you can look at the whole trade of stocks and corn and commodities and stuff like that. But it says the trade is closely monitoring the Russia-Ukraine situation. So globally, corn production, and not even with the whole fertilizer thing, they're watching what happens in Ukraine and Russia, which we'll, we'll touch on here in a bit. But... That kind of, you know, it, it goes to show you that something as simple as corn pays attention to what's going on abroad, specifically, you know, what's going on in the Ukraine. Uh, and uh, that's just like a whole nother thing there. But I wanted to share that with you, that this is why we need to stay focused and also pay attention 
to things around the globe, not only here in the U.S. Now, that being said, let's let's dive into corn. What, what else do you think corn would be used for uh, in your eyes? You know, how familiar you are with what corn uh, outside of human consumption and feed are used for. So let's kind of just touch on this real quick. I'm not going to go deep dive into it, but I'm just going to go over the list. Uh, and there's two two different, I had to do it in two different pages because there's that much stuff that corn's being used for. But just check this out. So, and this is from Kansas Corn. So kudos to out there to Kansas Corn and you Kansan, uh, Kansanians out there, however you guys call it. Um, but check it out. Toothpaste, yogurt, gum, cosmetics, shampoo, diapers, Envelopes, cornbread, hand soap, Windex, jelly beans and licorice, cornflakes, paper and recycled paper, cardboard, crayons, chalk, uh, running shoes. Uh, that's the first page. Now let me uh, move that article and grab the other part two of this. Throw that up on the screen. Spark plugs. I know you're thinking, great, spark plugs. But I, I want to I just touch on that one. Spark plugs in your car are made from a metal and ceramics. When the crystalline structures of cornstarch are heated at very high temperatures, they harden and it becomes a type of ceramic. The ceramic is able to withstand high temperatures and also withstand the corrosive properties of some specific acids. Just to show you that corn is even used for spark plugs. Rubber tires, fireworks, popcorn, pet food, batteries, deodorant, hand sanitizer, carpet, and other textile products, as well as plastic products. Wow, that's a mouthful. Anyways, those are... Other uses that they use corn for. So if you see, if corn is hit hard, which it was already hit hard last year and being hit harder this year due to the whole fertilizer situation, do you see how that domino, that small domino with people, that little kernel of corn and it grows into that crop, how that little thing not having the proper fertilizer for it. And there's some farmers that are thinking outside the box, which is awesome. Uh, because that's what farmers do. There's some gr there's some great people. The U.S. farming industry, man, there's some wonderful people out there, especially some of the smaller guys um, that, that blood, sweat, and tears and generations and generations have been producing corn for us, the people, to feed this country. But it goes to show that small domino and how those dominoes create this huge situation uh, that can affect a lot of other products. Just like, you know, people who've talked about the... Uh, what is it? The uh, the chip shortage and how chips are in everything that you use this day and age. Uh, now, I'll say some people say, well, I live off grid. But, yeah, the solar chargers, panels, uh, things that you may use out in those things. Uh, there's silicon chips or and those ingredients. What the chips, they just are in everything possible thing you can think of. Uh, your dehydrator um, and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anything that has a digital aspect to it. And beyond, uh, but back to corn. It's just this is how important that I think we should keep an eye on this whole corn situation and how it develops. Because without the fertilizer, farmers may be switching over to soybean this year. So you may see corn skyrocket in price because the demand is probably going to still be there, and of course the cost is going to soar because that demand, because the supply is very limited. Not only the fact that corn uh, maybe less uh available this year because of the whole fertilizer situation but uh you have to think about you know the whole supply chain the whole trucker thing uh rail labor issues and and, and not having enough people uh to from point a to point b folks you know from from the farm to the distribution to uh to the trucks you know shipping it back and forth and the list goes on uh there's literally a Massive breakdown in the way things work around the world, here and even here in the U.S. Anyways, I guess that's my spiel on corn, folks, uh, and the fertilizer shortage, and how something as simple as that issue can create a lot larger issues down the road. Now, I watched a whole video on on corn itself. I forget who, what it wasn't like a normal preparedness channel, but. The way they broke down things and the coincidences of uh, plants, fertilizer plants going up in flames, the coincidences of us putting sanctions on certain countries for fertilizer, uh, and all the other things that attribute to what's going on with that. But yeah, so that's my spiel on corn, folks. That's my spiel on corn. <coughs> Man, and... uh 
I don't know, man, folks. It's it's just a, it's just times are crazy, folks. Twenty twenty two is just getting. You know, we left dumpster fire twenty twenty one, and now we're leading into this. And that that's just my term for it, I guess. And some people do follow that same aspect of uh, the whole dumpster fire thing, but. One positive note, usually we see all kinds of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, protests, marches. We've been seeing them in Paris, Sweden, Germany, uh, the UK. We've been seeing them everywhere. Australia, we've been seeing all these things. And I didn't haven't seen very many in the U.S. Mostly what we see is the far left doing their thing uh, and, you know, being un, uh, uninhibited from doing them. Um, and... Uh, so I was surprised to see a very successful uh, march today on Washington. Some of you folks may be aware. Uh, mainstream media most likely is carrying it. Um, where it is. And this is the little headline, but I'm going to show you a couple of videos from the march as well. Um, it says, Breaking. Uh, tens of thousands gather in Washington to call for the end of the Charlie Victor mandates. Uh, the Children's uh, Health Defense is sponsoring the event, and they say they are expecting 20,000 people to participate in this mile-long march, um, which is phenomenal. And uh, the turnout is looking good. I, I give it that. A lot of folks uh, headed up to Washington to say, look, man, we're tired. Uh, if you see the UK and some other countries, they're dumping everything. They're dumping any uh, mandates and, and anything with masks and, and uh, whole things with their employers because they see that it is destroying their economy. But here in the U.S., uh, I guess, you know, according to Corn Pop uh, in his latest speech, everything is gravy. You know, get a little biscuit, throw some gravy on there. America's doing just fine. But we the people know different. We the people know different. Um, so uh, let me show this little clip before I show the crowd, and uh, and I'll shut my mouth for a second. Uh, no, I this one I don't think has any sound to it. But anyways, let's let's throw this first one up here. Uh, I like the bus. I really do. I like the bus, and that's why I I grab this video, and then we'll we'll do the crowd. I'll let you listen to that real quick. Uh, here's the first video clip. And I'll throw it up here. And uh, yeah, man. <laughs> that bus is awesome. The bus is awesome. Uh, you see this guy uh, who is, uh, you know, the Grim Reaper. And if you can see what it says on his uh, collar there, or whatever, the little sign there. Crazy stuff, folks. But uh, that bus in the background is awesome. Uh, love it. Love the bus. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that, that there is the first clip. Uh, of that one. I guess I should throw the clip on this screen so I'm not looking at, over here like I'm looking into nowhere land. But anyways, I love that. That clip was awesome. Uh, and then this one I'm going to shut my mouth so you guys can listen. It's a nice little short clip. Uh, but this is the crowd out there in Washington, D.C. today. So let's uh, throw that clip up as well. And uh, so we're here to rise above that. And I also want you to know, uh, spoiler alert, freedom wins. <laughs> And that's a solid crowd. That is a solid crowd. I'm very ecstatic. I'm very happy to see that many folks went out there uh, to D.C. Uh, for this march. Uh, phenomenal. Um, goes to show freedom is not dead, folks. Freedom is not dead. It's awesome. Uh, great folks out there put, putting this out there. And uh, I'm glad that people are finally pushing harder and harder, standing up for their rights here in our country. Uh, and we need to see more of it. We need to see more of it. Um, if, if, if here in Florida, anything locally, uh, if there's any marches or any protests or anything like that nature, I will be there. If I can get information, something like that's transpiring in my area, I will be there uh, in support. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see it in every single state. Hopefully we'll see every single state, uh, you know, hitting their local city councils, their, their, uh, you know, their counties, uh, all the way up to the state level. You know what I mean? Uh, and some of us, you know, if we live in Florida, we're like, well, we don't have to worry about too much of it, but yes, we still need our voices heard. I think everybody to the common man, to the common man needs to go out there and have their voice heard. Uh, and this is what I like about YouTube because this is how I feel that my voice is being heard and how I'm trying to spread a message out there to, 
to the folks, be it preparedness or be it something like this on the Sunday Shift Report. But all in all, you know, uh, get your voice heard, folks. Uh, and don't forget, you know, primaries. Make sure you go out there and vote. Maybe sure you can do it at the, at, the, at the local level, to the state level, to the federal level. Do everything you possibly can to get this country back on track. Um, and hopefully we can. Hopefully we can. Uh, that's that's all we can hope for, right, folks? Anyways, um, quick note um, before we get into uh, where is it at? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers surprises me because we know a lot of people boycotted football for quite some time because of the rhetoric that the players were doing. They were kneeling. Uh, they were uh, putting on stupid things on the back of their helmets, uh, a lot of ridiculous stuff. And this is my opinion, my opinion only. <clears throat> some of you folks may agree, some of you folks may disagree. Um, but I was shocked that Aaron Rodgers actually said something positive. And I don't mean specifically him, but being that he is a very uh, affluent person in the football thing, of course. I, I know most of you folks now have to know who Aaron Rodgers is, Green Bay Packers and whatnot. Uh, but I was very surprised that he went on a, and say, made his public statement. And here it is. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's just a small blurb. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it says, Aaron Rodgers blasts corn pop for Charlie Victor overreach multiple blunders. Uh, this was on January 22nd. Uh, it says, uh, when the president of the United States says this is a... Uh, health crisis of the unvictored, it's because him and his constituents, which I don't know how they are any, if, <laughs> I don't know how they're, <laughs> man, this, I don't know how, uh, let me, let me, st let me stop there. Let me repeat myself. Okay. Sorry. I got, I got the, the giggles for a moment. Uh, it says because him and his constituents, which I don't know how they are any, if you watch any of his attempts at public speaking, but I guess he got 81 million votes. Roger said, and we always laugh at that 81 million votes. Uh, basically, supposedly he got the more votes than any other presidential candidate in history and blah, 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 which we all know is probably a farce and probably just some, I, I'm not even going to touch on it. But you guys, you got, you folks know, you guys have been with me on this over a year or some of you new folks, but, but all in all, man, uh, kudos to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, thank you for being a true American and standing up. Standing up, if we can just get more people with, I guess, uh, what do they have? They have like this this, this public, uh, they have more of a platform where when they speak, people listen. Uh, as we know from the other side, we've seen a bunch of basketball, uh, you know, not a bunch, but a few basketball players. I, I don't even want to mention his name to give him any street credit or just credibility, but saying the crap that he says because without China... He would be nothing, and you guys know what I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, man, uh, I was shocked. I was shocked. Uh, kudos to him uh, for making a statement like that. Uh, you know, because he's taking a risk, because this is cancel culture, and and, and if you say the wrong thing uh, that doesn't correspond with the other side, uh, they try to remove you, especially with someone of stature like that, uh, and who has a career that he does. Anyways, uh, I got a couple quick things, other things here. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about the Ukraine. Uh, there's some people that have really broken it down. Uh, I like the way Bear did it on his, uh, what does he call it? Uh, he has this thing where he breaks down certain things, and he had a map. Uh, he was showing some things. Uh, very intriguing stuff uh, when it comes to that. Also, like I said, Dragon in the Discord sent me that video, which was more another intriguing. It just all comes together. And I see, I'm wa I've been watching mainstream media and how the mudslinging is going. They're, Russia's saying that, we don't know what the heck you're talking about. Uh, the United Kingdom is making statements, and then, and then of course, our country is making statements that, that, not, that doesn't correspond with the United Kingdom said. <laughs> you know, because there was, uh, the United Kingdom had put out a post saying that Putin is trying to put, or Russia, whoever you want to call it, is trying to put a person in power in Kiev... Uh, that supports Russia, and the United States said, no, that's not true. Uh, and then Russia <laughs> comes out with another thing. Matter of fact, I think I have the tweet here from a Russian uh, Twitter feed. I think, where is that? Here, here we go. Um, it says, disinformation circulated by FCDDOG 
uh, Gov UK, which is the United Kingdom thing. Another indication that it is the NATO members led by the Anglo-Saxon nations who are escalating tensions around the Ukraine. We urge the foreign office to stop spreading nonsense. Uh, and as you see down there, it says the Kremlin plans to install pro-Russian leadership in the Ukraine. Exposed. This was from the UK. Um, and then the United, I, I don't know if it was Pisaki or, or Corn Pop or whoever came out with another thing saying it's not true. So <laughs> uh, who knows, folks? But let's touch on this a bit. And here, here's what, uh, because if you watch in, in the speech, Corn Pop said, you know, Depending on what they do, we may do this and sanction this, sanction that. And I'm like, man, we've been sanctioning Russia for over a decade and blah, blah, blah. But uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's see what Biden, uh, I almost said his name, Corn Pop said his administration. So throw that article up real quick. And it says, Corn, Pop, Corn, <laughs> Corn Pop's administration vows severe response if a single additional Russian force enters the Ukraine. A single, does that mean a soldier? Does that mean a single soldier happens to cross that line, Corn Pop? Are you going to really do something? Are you going to, what does severe mean? Because they don't, they don't elaborate on what the term severe means. They don't, they're not really stating it. Is there, are we going to do severe sanctions on, on the Russian Federation? Is that what we plan on doing? Or are we going to take it a step further? Uh, and this is what concerns me is because we don't know. Uh, anyways, it says the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Sunday said the United States would initiate a swift and severe response if Russia's military enters Ukraine. If a single additional Russian force goes into the Ukraine in an aggressive way, uh, as I said, that would trigger a swift and severe and united response from us and Europe, Blinken said in a response to question about sanctions during a CNN interview on Sunday morning. He did not elaborate on what penalties uh, the United States would hand down. His comment came as tens of thousands of Russian troops have amassed near Russia's border uh, with Ukraine in recent days amid fears that Moscow is planning to invade its neighbor in, 24, uh, in, its neighbor. in 2014. Russia used its military forces to annex the Crimean Peninsula, which is like that little island right off the southeastern part of Crimea or Ukraine or whatever, uh, and a move that drew sanctions from then President Barack. Barack Obama. Go figure. We have the same puppets in Washington right now. It makes absolutely sense while this is being pushed as hard as being pushed. Then we have a follow-up article to touch to, to finish this whole uh, Ukraine thing off because I know everybody's talking about it. So I so here I am doing it same thing, right? Anyways, uh, this was January 23rd as well. It says, very significant res uh, risk of Russia invading Ukraine. The United Kingdom, uh, the minister of the UK said, very significant risk of Russia invading Ukraine. So where's it going, folks? Is it going to happen? Not going to happen? Is Russia, is, are, we, are, we push, are, we, are, we, are we pushing the Russians to do something? Is it media? What, what is happening? I, I wish I could, I wish I knew someone uh, that I wish I was like one of those reporters that have like all these connections in regards to, uh, folks out there in Russia. Like, Hey man, what does your side have to say? It, it, you know, because there's a lot of disinformation on there on both sides. I'm not saying support this person or support that. I'm just saying on both sides, uh, you have the United Kingdom putting press releases out. You have the, the Russians putting press releases out. Um, I don't hear too much from crime, uh, from the Ukraine, uh, which is weird, um, but anyways, it says, uh, in this article it says there is a very significant risk that Russia will carry out an invasion of Ukraine. Britain's deputy prime minister, Dominic Rob or Rahab or however you say his name has said, Western allies have made clear there would be a very severe economic consequences. So again, sanctions, uh, for Russia, if its troops cross the border into Ukraine, uh, Rob told the BBC Sunday morning program, we want allies across NATO to understand the seriousness of what's going on. He said, Rob said the UK wants Russian President Vladimir Putin to step back from the brink, but said that he thinks there is a very significant risk of the invasion, invasion taking place. Now, uh, giving credit to uh, Bear over at Bear Independent, uh, he showed the map and it made sense to what Bear was saying. Bear was basically saying that uh, in Kazakhstan, Russia's there right now, right? They got troops there. They're very friendly with Russia. Uh, and when Russian comes into your home, I think to quote, 
uh, Barrett was it when Russia's there, they're very, when Russia become when Russia is in your country, they're very hard to get out or whatnot. Something like that. Don't quote me on that, but I'm just trying to remember what I watch on his content. <clears throat> and then he showed this map, uh, which I thought was very intriguing. And he, he showed that Kazakhstan's here over this part of, uh, the Ukraine, uh, the Crimean, uh, or Crimea Peninsula where the, the Russians are at. And then the Russian border on this side Basically, they're all almost in all fronts, you know what I mean? It's like 75% uh, Russia has could possibly have their troops roll through. Now, if they take the Ukraine, uh, I guess uh, the way I interpret it was uh, that Poland, which is a NATO ally because uh, Ukraine isn't, uh, and from my understanding, they want to be as well, but Poland is a NATO ally, and uh that's when I think things get, uh, or as uh, I, I not I want to say because Bear stated this, not me specifically, but stated that uh, that's when NATO, who uh, is run by America, basically uh, said that things get a little iffy uh, and can get tricky. So we'll see. We'll see how things plan out. We'll see how things plan out. Um, and this is why I like watching uh, other people's content because I like to see. Uh, they bring things to to my attention that I, I I wasn't even aware of. You know what I mean? Because I only have I only have so much time uh, to read things and to watch mainstream media and different parts of articles that I read. But <clears throat> it was very well done and it was very informative. So uh, appreciate. Uh, thank you, Bear out there, Bear Independent. Awesome video, man. I like the way you uh, presented that material. Uh, and it was very informative. Anyways, those are the two articles I had with the whole Ukraine thing, and of course. Throughout the this week and so on and so forth, and moving forward, we'll probably hear more of it. You know what I mean? Uh, last thing I want to talk about um, is the metaverse. Uh, a lot of folks went out and bought the what do they call it? What is that little piece of device called? Uh, the Oculus Quest. Uh, uh, it's like a VR headset. You know what I mean? To enter the metaverse. And uh, I came across this article on Zero Hedge, and I was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't even know that was being something that was a, a situation. And I'm glad that they brought it to light, because imagine you buy your kid this device for whatever reason. You know, you they asked for it for Christmas, and you got them this headset, and they're jumping into the metaverse because they think it's cool and all that stuff like that. But do you know what's going on in there? So let's throw up the article real quick. And... Uh, and there you go. It says uh, the dark side of the metaverse exposed. It says why your kids need to stay away from VR chat. So VR chat is this very popular thing inside the metaverse. Um, it says parents who bought their children the Oculus Quest 2 for Christmas could be up for a surprise as there have been several instances of child grooming within one of the virtual reality headsets most popular chat room services VR chat. VR Chat is an online virtual world platform where users can get their first taste of the metaverse and use full body avatars to conceal their identity. So you don't know who you're talking to. You might think you're talking to another 10, 12, 13, 14 year old, but it could be some 80, 90, 50, 40, 30 year old man or what woman, whatever it might be. You don't know who they really are because they're disguised. Anyways, there have been several instances of child abuse harassment, racism, and pornography pornography on the popular chat room service. Uh, one clip shared by the YouTube uh, YouTuber VSF Studio shares several instances of a massive problem in VR chat, child exploitation, child exploitation, and sexualization. All happening in the metaverse. So folks, if you have kids out there and, and they're involved in this whole metaverse thing and they have this little Oculus thing, you need to pay attention to what they're doing. You need to pay attention who they're communicating with. Uh, this could be very detrimental to them. Uh, we've heard so many horror stories. Uh, and now I feel that this is opening up a new window, a new opportunity for the predators to come out uh, and uh, focus their uh, their nasty uh, grip on children uh, that may not be as uh, up-to-date or as intelligent or savvy when it comes to interpreting what these people are doing uh, and why they're there. Uh, I'm trying to say it in the best way possible without going too far on it, you know what I mean? But I wanted to bring it to light to our community because we all have children, a lot of us do, uh, or know someone that does, uh, and this information needs to be shared. Uh, that being said, I hopefully, 
hopefully a lot of you folks, when you come across my videos and you find something that's very important, you share it with your friends. Be it if it's you sharing it on another social media platform, being it if you're copying my uh, sharing, because down there you can go to the video and share the video to your Facebook. You can share this video to whatever feed that you're on, uh, whatever platform, if it's a vlog or blah, blah, blah. Even other content creators are getting smart and sharing things that they feel like they say, hey, uh, look, I just uh, Frontier Preppers just did an awesome video about this certain topic. And they're putting it in their community tab uh, so that their subscribers can say, okay, let me check out Frontier Preppers and see what this topic's about and be like, wow, that was a really good informative video. And I think just imagine if a lot of us other content creators did stuff like that, which I'm trying to get more involved in, but also the big wigs, uh, the head honchos, the, the larger channels, uh, if they come across a smaller channel and be like, wow, uh, they did a really good job on this video. Uh, I'd like to share this out. And they put it on their community tab or share it on their Instagram or whatever platform they have um, just to get the information circulation uh, circulating through our community uh, and hopefully beyond. And hopefully beyond. Uh, anyways, folks, again, uh, like I said, we're about 35, 45 minutes, 30, 45, 35, 40 minutes in. I want to thank every single one of you guys for being here. Truly appreciate your time uh, for joining me on the Sunday Shift Report. Uh, I, I, again, prayers to Tim, the prepping preacher and his family out there. Um, and don't forget Sunday uh, or Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the live stream that I have with Dr. Arthur T. Bradley. Again, phenomenal person. Uh, very, like I said, he's one of the world renowned experts in coronal mass ejections, EMPs, uh, and then some. Also, he's deep into the whole preparedness community thing as well. Uh, so join me at 7 p.m. Uh, Tuesday night for that. It's definitely going to be a good show. Um, try to make sure there's anything else. Uh, I got, I'm going to have a very busy week ahead of me, so we'll see what comes out on the YouTubes, uh, for my channel. So stay tuned, make sure that bell notification is checked, make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, and you know, if you, if you got any value out of this, man, thumbs it up. I appreciate that. Share it out, all that fun stuff like that. Other than that, mods, thank you so much. Uh, you guys are phenomenal folks. I always like to recognize you because you guys are the unsung heroes of the YouTube verse. Uh, you guys come in here, you make things that are family friendly, you drop links, you do so much work behind the scenes to help these channels out as well as myself. Thank you so much, Mod. You guys are f amazing people. And uh, this year, I have I have something planned for you, for you Mods, this year, so stay tuned uh, as the year progresses. Other than that, this is Gray Man, and I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound. God bless. Stay safe, folks.